What's up guys, this is Merc Music, and welcome, welcome to, my to my final, final review, review of the Black, Black Ops 6 beta. beta. After playing a disgusting amount of the Black Ops 6 beta over the last week or so, how's the veteran from the US Merc feeling about this game? Are we going to ascend to Omni Heaven? Or will we descend into the fiery pits of Omni Hell? Let's find out. Now before we really dive into the meat shield of this video, I do want to mention that I already made a video called My Honest Review of the Black Ops 6 beta, and in that video I covered a lot of what I was thinking about the the first weekend of the beta. If you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend checking it out before watching this one because this video is mostly going to cover how I'm feeling about the game after playing the second weekend of the beta because even though they didn't necessarily add a ton, you know, we got like 10 more levels, we got a couple of new guns. I really do feel like the game actually kind of changed a lot coming from the first weekend of the beta to the second weekend. So just keep in mind that for this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about the second weekend of the multiplayer beta. And if I'm not covering something or not talking about something in this video, it was probably covered in the previous video where it mostly talked about the first weekend. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is actually a tweet that happens, which was talking about the Hades crossbar from Black Ops 4 returning into Black Ops 6. Matt Scrantz, who's the associate director for design at Treyarch, had replied to this saying, we've got some fun stuff planned inspired by operator mods built into gunsmith and attachments. I've had a lot of people ask me if Black Ops 6 is going to have aftermarket parts like in Modern Warfare 3, and every single time, I basically have to say no because it hasn't been confirmed, we didn't see it in the beta, and hopefully I'm showing you guys some gameplay of this in the background, but I actually did unlock the crossbar for the LMG, and it was decently fun to use. And it's really interesting to see this tweet, like the fact that operator mods from BO4 would be coming back in some way, shape, or form for Black Ops 6 does mean that there is a potential for some really unique attachments to be coming either at the launch of Black Ops 6 or possibly even later in the game. Now, I don't think we're going to have weekly kind of aftermarket parts or weekly operator mods in Black Ops 6. We don't know that quite yet, but I got to say, man, if they do decide to go that route, it would be pretty awesome. It added a lot of replay value and fun to Modern Warfare 3, and I'd love to see it come back. But next up, let's talk about the two new maps that were added with the second weekend of the game. We had Babylon in 6v6. It was in the core mosh pit playlist, and then we had Stake out, which was only available to play in gunfight. Now, what's really interesting about this is Treyarch basically confirmed that there will not be any large maps in Black Ops 6, and clearly the focus is on small to medium-sized maps. Now, I do want to say I think this is great for the typical Call of Duty experience, since large maps have historically gotten completely shit on for being too slow and boring. I'm looking at you, Stonehaven. Looking at you, Anya Palace from Modern Warfare 2019. Typically, the kinds of maps that COD fans are looking forward to playing the most and tends to have the best experience on and the best memories of are the small and medium sized maps in the game. However, there were a lot of people complaining about the spawns in the Black Ops 6 beta and Babylon definitely had some questionable spawns. I mean, just look at this. Wait, this guy's not playing. Mini shield. They didn't do it. They're spawning. They're spawning right here. Bro, what? Bro, make it make sense. Now, in fairness, I think that the Babylon domination spawn specifically will need the most amount of work. You know, the spawn trapping, while it probably is possible on hardpoint TDM or kill order or anything else, it wasn't nearly as bad as it was compared to domination. Like, dude, I feel like I haven't seen that bad of an ADS spawn trap in so long in a COD game. It's honestly weirdly nostalgic, but it definitely, definitely needs to get fixed. If you guys saw the previous Honest Review video of Black Ops 6, you will know that spawns were in the bad section, like the negative portion of my video and I still do think they're going to need quite a lot of work, especially if the maps are mostly going to be small to medium for sure. Because obviously, if the game did have maps the size of Stonehaven spawns, I, I really don't think that could be an issue at all because no one would be able to find anyone. But aside from Baby Lion, the only other new map introduced with the second weekend was a map called Stakeout available in gunfights, and it was a neat map. It definitely feels like it was only designed or built for gunfight though, and I'm just not like the biggest gunfight player in Call of Duty, and I feel like if this map was brought into 6v6, there could be some insane spawn trapping. Like, the spawn trapping songs would just explode at that point. But it was definitely a really nice looking map, and I like the fact that you could kind of like maneuver your way around the side of the map, like you could kind of do some hardcore parkour and get around, even in the middle of the map as well, but again, gunfight is just not my thing. Which that is going to transition me into my next point, which is just gunfight as a mode. Overall, I'm just kind of indifferent about gunfight. I know there's some people out there that just like love this game mode, but for me, it's neat, but it's also kind of Infinity Ward's thing, right? It just feels kind of off, you know, like this game mode, there was an alpha for it in Modern Warfare 2019. So to see it part of Black Ops 6's beta just almost doesn't make sense. And I know there were tons and tons of people begging for a search and destroy in the beta. I feel like they could have thrown that in instead, but 
they're just gonna have to wait for the full launch of the game. And overall, I do kind of wish that we could have just seen something different or even possibly brand new, something that really just screams Treyarch and not Infinity Ward. And honestly, what kind of made Gunfight feel even more off-putting to me in the Black Ops 6 beta specifically is that at the end of the rounds, there were no kill cams. So you couldn't see if someone was potentially cheating or not. And there were cheaters and hackers kind of going crazy in the Black Ops 6 beta. So yeah, if you're a douchebag who wants to download cheats and hacks and go ruin Gunfight, I mean, you were probably having a field day with this mode, but... Again, it's just not my thing, and with that in mind, I just really didn't want to play it more than once. But next up, let's talk about the perks, because there were a lot of perks that actually got added with the second weekend of the game. I don't even know if I could necessarily list all of them, but overall, I like the addition of the perks that were added with the second weekend. Ninja was pretty good, but it didn't necessarily feel like a crutch to have to use in respawn game modes. One of the perks that got added was super useful. It's called Gearhead. It was really great for charging up your field upgrades, especially for one of the next things we're going to be talking about here in a sec. And we also got Tack Mask, which which was super helpful for the newly buffed flashbangs. Unfortunately, I didn't find myself running it too much in the beta, so uh, yeah, I've got a LASIK appointment for next week. Overall, I really do think that Gearhead was one of the best perks that was added, and that's because of the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is a new field upgrade only in Black Ops 6 called Sleeper Agent. Now, first and foremost, I just wanna say that I thought that this thing was hilarious. Anytime I was using Sleeper Agents, people were mentioning the TF2 Spy. Now, I mean, I haven't played Team Fortress 2, so I don't really know exactly what it means, but I can't explain what this does in Black Ops 6. So the Sleeper Agent field upgrade is a slow charging field upgrade, and when you use it, you'll actually disguise yourself as a member of the enemy team. It will also physically change your character's appearance to match the skins of the opposite faction, unless of course, an enemy is using the perk Vigilance. And this just adds so many unique dynamics to the gameplay. Now, obviously, if you're on the receiving end of Sleeper Agents, it can feel kind of frustrating at first, but after the first couple of days of the second weekend of the beta, I feel like people were starting to get a lot more accustomed to the Sleeper Agent field upgrade and how to counter it. But there's a particular aspect of Sleeper Agents that I don't see too many people talking about, which is the fact that when you use it, you can also hear all of the enemy team's comms in game chat. And dude, this gave me some heavy COD 4 nostalgia with the eavesdrop perk, where you could hear the enemy team as you started to get closer to them. Now, from my experience, I don't know if activating it turns on like prox chat. I don't know if it does that specifically, or if in general, you could just hear everyone on the enemy team, but I know for a fact that I used it and I could start to hear the enemies talking. And this led to some pretty hilarious moments where I could hear them saying like, oh, I think that, you know, the one dude is using Sleeper Agent, like he's, you know, going around the map and stuff. And ultimately I had the most amount of fun using Sleeper Agent so I could easily get behind enemies and take them into a body shield. Because then on top of being able to hear the enemies comms, you could also then just talk directly to them as well. This has the potential to lead to some absolutely hilarious moments. And I think that the Sleeper Agent's field upgrade overall is a lot of fun and it could be a great thing for Black Ops 6 because of just how unique it is. But I do want to add a slight caveat, which is the fact that people who are kind of new to the game or just noobs in general might hate it initially because they might think that you're hacking. Imagine that someone is brand new to the Call of Duty franchise and they pick up Black Ops 6 and they see someone that looks like a teammate shooting them. If we don't fix the false spam reporting system in the game, there's going to be a lot of people potentially getting banned because noob teammates might think that someone on their team is cheating and shooting them and killing them. When in reality, it's actually just a new dynamic aspect of the multiplayer. And that's why I'm talking about this so much and putting so much emphasis on this, because this field upgrade was probably the biggest game changer for the second weekend of the beta. And overall, it seems to be adding an intelligence skill gap into the game, and it increases player awareness in a new and unique way that we've never seen in a COD game before. And this does have me a little worried, because I think that some people might just straight up hate this as a feature, but if it's used properly, it does add a ton of dynamics to the gameplay. And from my personal experience, I never really used sleeper agents to try to go on big kill streaks and just completely confuse and dominate the other team. Nah, fam, I was mostly just using this to just get behind people and take them as a body shield and then get weird. Come on, I want this guy, I want this guy. <laughs> Where did that grenade come from? Oh, he's all behind me. You want the Whopper? Oh, yeah. Mm. No, there's one mm. burger. One more. Like that Whopper, don't you, boy? Mmm. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> There is one thing I want to talk about, which was not present in the beta, but it will be present in the full game, and that's going to be hardcore modes. It could be questionable in hardcore because we don't know exactly how it's going to play out. I would imagine that in hardcore, it's going to be even more difficult to figure out who is an enemy and who is a teammate. That's already the case in hardcore. I mean, dude, I play a, a good amount of hardcore in Modern Warfare 3 and I get team killed all the time simply just for existing and playing that game mode. And on top of that as well, in some past Call of Duty games, we've also had Ricochet be a thing 
Now, I'm not talking about the anti-cheat, I'm talking about if you shoot your teammates, instead of them taking any damage, you would actually just take all of that damage back, and if you shoot too many times, you'll actually just die. So, honestly, when it comes to hardcore in Black Ops 6, I don't know exactly how that's gonna play out, and I really do hope that the game is going to have hardcore. I really don't want to see another debacle like Modern Warfare 2 2022, where the game ships with Tier 1, and then the entire hardcore fan base is just left with nothing, and then they have to petition and Riot to bring it back, and then Infinity Ward axes Tier 1, and then brings back hardcore. I don't know, it's just a super interesting situation and I'm really curious to see how Treyarch is going to balance Sleeper Agent and Hardcore. But again, it wasn't in the beta. I'm just talking about hypotheticals, but since I'm talking about Sleeper Agent, I figured I'd mention all of this because it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. And dude, I swear this is the last little bit of glaze I'm going to add to the Sleeper Agent donut, but this also definitely really plays into the theme of trust no one from the campaign. Like, bro, the Sleeper Agent field upgrade is like such a spy action thriller kind of thing being added into the game. The kill feed gets censored out like the characters in the trailers. It's just dope. But next up, let's talk about the two new guns that were added into the rotation for Weekend 2. We had a marksman rifle called the DM-10, and then we had the Tanto 22 SMG. For the second weekend of the beta, I used both of the guns pretty extensively. I got the Tanto maxed out, and I almost maxed out the DM-10. I feel like they were decent additions to the game. They didn't really seem to break the weapon balance necessarily. I thought overall that they were fun to use, but they didn't feel top tier, which I do think is pretty good because the Jackal PDW did get nerfed for the second weekend. The C9, which was basically the MP5 of the game, it did get a slight buff, and overall the C9 started to get spammed as like the, the best new meta SMG. But the Tonto SMG was also pretty good, and it kind of replaced the Jackal PDW as the SMG that kind of performs better at medium to longer ranges. Overall, the weapon balance for the second weekend of the game was starting to get better, and I was seeing some more variety, but we're going to talk about that a little bit more later in the review. Next up, I want to talk about some pieces of equipment that were new to the second weekend of the beta, starting off with the Blast Trap, or as I like to call it, the Baja Blast Trap. And I'm not going to lie, man, this thing was kind of annoying, but also kind of funny. It led to some funny moments, but it's basically like a little Nerf football that you throw on the ground that acts as a claymore, except it's not necessarily as good as a claymore. You pretty much just plop it down, and if an enemy runs near it, it's gonna make some kind of goofy little beep noise, and then they'll blow up and die. I think if you were running flak jackets, it wouldn't really have been too much of an issue because you'd run over it, and it, you know, it would blow up and kind of mess up your screen, but then you could stim and just get right back into the action. I will say, though, that this thing could easily get spammed, especially in the face-off modes, like if you're playing pit. I don't know if we necessarily need something like this to be in the game. It's just one of those things that leads to cheap kills that really don't need to happen, but since it's in the game, it's gonna get players cheap and unfair kills every so often, but I'm not going to harp on it too much because the next thing I want to talk about, we really, really need to talk about, which is the return of the combat axe. And while I'm extremely happy to have it back in Black Ops 6, and it was really fun to use in the second weekend, and even though I literally got a trophy from Call of Duty for getting one of the first ever cross maps, the combat axe in Black Ops 6 in its current state needs some serious, serious work. Now, I do want to preface all of this by saying that they might have purposefully nerfed the combat axe for the beta, so that way casual players don't get upset or frustrated by what they might think is a quote, like, cheap kill. But if that's not the case, and it's like this for the full game, we're gonna need to talk. The first thing is that you can't get cross-map combat axes. Now, I know that sounds weird because I've actually hit multiple of them at this point, but you can't get cross-map axes at the start of the game. At the very start of a match, if you throw an axe across the map and it hits an enemy player, within a certain time frame, they actually have spawn protection and they won't die. I think this might have only happened to me once or twice, but I don't think I have the clips uh, organized properly, so I don't know where it might be. But it definitely happened to me and it's just extremely off-putting. It's very, like anti-Call of Duty. Being able to spawn in and throw a throwing knife or a combat axe across the map and get someone right at the start of the game is just extremely fun. It's a lot of fun to go for. And yes, while we can still get cross-map axes at any other given point in time during the match, it just kind of sucks not be able to get it at the start. Because most people who play Call of Duty will never get a cross-map combat axe in their life. So being able to have that predictability and try to get it at the start of a match usually leads to a lot more success for COD players. I mean, prime example, look back to Black Ops 1 and Summit. You could consistently throw a tomahawk across the map and almost be guaranteed to hit someone just because of how that map worked and how consistent it was. These tend to be really big moments and big highlights for COD players and it's just really strange that they would leave spawn protection on and that combat axes would not be able to bypass that. And that brings me to my second point for the axes which is that you cannot dive and throw the axe no matter what. Now again this does kind of fall in line with the idea that they might have not allowed us to do this in the beta because they don't want people complaining about someone diving across the screen and throwing an axe at their face but it just felt 
really strange. Like, I had a lot of fun sliding and throwing the axe and getting kills that way, but it just felt kind of strange that you couldn't do that by diving. I mean, there were also no perks in the game whatsoever that could help you with this. If you performed a dive in the Black Ops 6 beta, you would have to wait until your character lands on the ground, wait about like half a second or so, and then you could throw it. And guess what? In that time period, in that time frame, you're going to get shot and killed. Unless you reverse boosted into a bot lobby or something, the average COD player is not going to let you just do that. The time to kill is fast enough, they'll be able to react fast enough to stop you from ever doing that. So yeah, for the full game, I would like to see us be able to dive and throw the axe, even if that requires using a certain perk, like maybe dexterity or gung-ho, something like that. The third thing, which for me, I this was the worst part of combat axes in the Black Ops 6 beta, Trophy systems straight up blocked combat axes from going through. Again, this is like one of those things that just feels anti Call of Duty. A lot of people ran trophy systems because they were tired of getting hit by tactical grenades and lethal explosives as well. But one thing that you could almost always rely on in previous COD games is that your combat axe or your tomahawk or your throwing knife, whatever, you could basically rely on that to still just go bypass a trophy system and still kill someone. And the reason why that would happen is because using a combat axe or a tomahawk or a throwing knife, it requires more skill, it requires more precision. When you're throwing something like a frag grenade or a Simtex, you just need it to hit a certain area and hope that someone is in that area and then that they'll die. That's not really how it works with combat axes or throwing knives. They require more precision. It's a more deliberate thing. So to have a trophy system just block it when in previous COD games, that's almost never the case, just kind of sucks. This is what I would describe as very, very ewy, especially in a Treyarch Call of Duty game. Treyarch please fix. And I promise this is the last thing I'm going to rant about when it comes to combat axes. And again, this might not even be an issue in the full game, but at least in the beta, there was no way to run more than one axe. Now I would assume since this game has wild cards as an option, maybe we could run danger close and have two combat axes or two frag grenades or simtexes when the full game's out. But I'm just saying in the beta, we didn't have this and it was overall kind of difficult to go combat axe only. Your best bet was trying to supplement this by running the assault pack or scavenger. Different perk combinations could let you resupply and get more axes, but you could not run two. So if you wanted to go around just using combat axes, it was really difficult because if you miss even one throw, you're probably dead. But yes, that is going to end my passionate rants about the combat axes in the Black Ops 6 beta. Let's move on to something that was actually just truly awesome in the beta for the second weekend, which was the return of the chopper gunner. This might be a little controversial, but I'm going to say it. This was debatably one of the coolest chopper gunners in any Call of Duty game period. Now, obviously the Modern Warfare 2 chopper gunner has a special place in my pink but this chopper gunner is nasty, man. It has dope ass cinematics for calling it in. And when it crashes, I mean, dude, the fact that it looks so cool when it crashes, just look at the cinematic, man. Oh, they actually shot it down. Wow. GG. Oh, this animation is sick. Dang. Oh my God. That's the coolest chopper gunner animation I've ever seen. And when you're actually using the chopper gunner and shooting people, it not only sounds powerful, but it is powerful. Most of the people I use this against in the beta have no idea how to shoot it down. And it's basically a guaranteed 20 to 30 kills every time you call it in. There was this one match I played on Derelict where I just destroyed the enemy team. I earned three chopper gunners in the match and dropped over a hundred kills. As much fun as this was to earn and use, this could be a potential concern in terms of balance. But to be honest, it's also pretty damn hard to earn. Like getting yourself a chopper gunner is no easy feat. And overall, the difficulty of actually pulling it off and earning one, it sort of does even things out. It's much like the sleeper agent field upgrade in that regard. Like you can maybe only earn one or two of those in a match if you're lucky, depending on the mode you're playing. And overall, it kind of seems like Treyarch is putting a heavy emphasis on high impact, bold gameplay choices. And when it comes to bold choices, people tend to either love or hate those design choices. Now, since this is my review of the Black Ops 6 beta, I personally think that it can be a good thing if it's done right. And I do think that bold gameplay choices usually lead to more memorable games. And I don't know if you guys might have noticed this, but the chopper gunner was really the only like super high tier kill streak or score streak that you could earn in the beta, which leads me to believe that there's going to be some more stuff coming for the full game. And it's probably going to be really strong as well. So if you're a fan of going for those high tier score streaks and earning those and using them and destroying people with them, you're probably really going to like black ops six. But if you're someone who's not the biggest fan of score streaks, yeah, make sure you have a Sigma on all your classes. But moving on, I want to talk about something that I didn't really catch in the first weekend that I do want to talk about for the entirety of the Black Ops 6 beta, which is that there was no post game Genet. trash talk. I didn't really notice this at first, but as I was getting more and more into game chat and trying to trash talk people at the end, I noticed that 
you couldn't do it in the beta. Now, again, like I've mentioned, maybe they just didn't want there to be post-game trash talk in the beta. It could be coming in the full game. Again, it's one of those things that's like a typical staple feature of Call of Duty games, and maybe they just didn't want that to happen in the beta because they don't want things to look bad or something. I don't know. But I just gotta say, it, it did kind of feel off, right? I mean, we have VoIP features in this game that we've never had before, like sleeper agents and the body shields. There were so many weird moments coming from those things in the game, but... Why can't we trash talk at the end of the game? I don't know. Just kind of felt like a weird choice and it, it was weird to not see it in the beta. It could be available in the full game, but I figured I'd mention it because I didn't see it in the beta. Next up, even though this was overall kind of a tiny attention to detail, this was different for the second weekend of the beta. I love the fact that they added sound effects to the emotes at the end in the winner circle for the game. At first, I was really confused. I was like, where the hell are these sound effects coming from? But then I noticed that the little like squeaks, the little boops and stuff that were happening, that was actually just part of the winner circle. I thought it was really funny. It's a nice little attention of detail nothing too crazy but i figured i pointed out because it wasn't there in the first weekend but next up i want to talk about something that for me personally got a lot better in the second weekend but it was terrible absolutely horrible and it was actually my number one complaint in my honest review of the black ops 6 beta which was the connection the packet burst especially i don't know what they did i don't know what kind of voodoo magic they worked on those servers but dude the packet bursting got way better for me on the second weekend i had virtually none for me personally there were literally only a couple of moments where i had packet bursts that were actually affecting my gameplay to the point where I would get upset. Now, before you guys come at me with your torches and pitchforks, I am well aware of the fact that this did not get fixed for everyone. I know that there were still a ton of people getting packet burst issues and having all kinds of bad connection experiences on the beta. And overall, this is something that still needs to be fixed. It still needs to be worked on for sure. But you know, since this is my review and this is my experience with the Black Ops 6 beta that I'm sharing with you, I just figured I'd let you guys know that it did get better for me somehow. And just as a frame of reference, I was mostly playing the Black Ops 6 beta on PC through Battle.net. I've got fiber internet. I'm playing the game at 4K 144 Hertz, basically with max settings. And I also had the on-demand texture streaming set to optimize, not minimal. I just figured I'd share that information because it could be pertinent to figuring out the issues and the reasoning as to why packet bursts are such a big issue in the newer Call of Duty games, especially Black Ops 6 in the beta form and Modern Warfare 3 in the full game. But man, oh man, we need to talk about the fact that there were, it felt like more people cheating and hacking on the second weekend of the beta compared to the first. And I do feel like part of that is because this was the free open beta weekend. Now, I don't personally feel like I ran into anyone that was cheating or hacking on the first weekend, the pre-order beta. But when the beta was opened up, I literally just made a video talking about this. I was playing with Matt and we ran into someone who was actually walling and they had like some kind of aimbot, whether it's soft aimbot or something, doing all kinds of crazy YY spam. Now, obviously, YYing is not a clear indicator of someone cheating. People can YY all the time, but it's the fact that it's coupled with someone who is clearly locking onto targets through walls and also pre-firing them. That is not normal human player behavior. That's not something that actually happens. And I really do hope that for the full game for Black Ops 6, that Ricochet anti-cheat could be more proactive in stopping these people from cheating instead of just reacting to it. I think that's the most frustrating part of the system is that they want people to basically go out and actively cheat and hack they collect data from those people, and then they do these massive ban waves where all of them basically get banned and caught. Now, I will give them the benefit of the doubts. This person that was cheating in our lobby basically got banned a couple hours later. That stupid little rat rage quit the game before more people could, you know, either trash talk him in game chat or send reports. It's just, it's so annoying. But speaking of annoying, we're going to move on and talk about something else, which is the snipers in the Black Ops 6 beta. Now, again, this is something that could change for the full game, and I, I just have to keep mentioning that because it does feel like one of those scenarios where maybe Maybe they purposely undertuned the snipers so that way casuals and noobs would not complain or whine too much about getting quick scoped. These dudes don't want to get clips. They don't want to get put into a phase montage. But the reality is that when you're going against people like phase scope, you're going up against people who are extremely talented and extremely good at sniping in the game. They'll do it no matter how good or bad the sniping is. But the truth though, is that for the average player, Snipers were way too slow and way too sluggish to compete with basically anything else in the game. Now, it's not to say that you couldn't see success while sniping, but overall, I feel like for the average player, the fact that the flinch was too strong, the ADS and sprint to fire was too slow to compete with the base weapon speeds of basically every other weapon class in the game comboed with the Omni movement, it was just frustrating, man. I'm sure they're well aware of this, and I would hope that the snipers are going to be tuned differently for the launch of the game. I really do hope that they are better because man, in the Black Ops 6 beta, I feel like if you made the decision to snipe, you were going to experience some pretty high highs when you had good games, but you would also experience the lowest of the lows in the beta. And I really do hope that that point hits home because for example, if you're someone who played this beta and almost exclusively used SMGs or assault rifles, I can't imagine that you ever went like, I don't know, two to 34 because when I was out there sniping, trying to quickscope those people, 
I had matches like that. It was brutal. It was really honestly kind of depressing. I have never felt that bad at sniping in a Call of Duty game. But on the flip side, since we have skill based matchmaking, if I ever played a game going like eight to 27, the skill based matchmaking would kick in and it would put me against people who weren't nearly as good. And then I could have more of a fighting chance and, you know, maybe have a one KD, maybe have a two KD if I'm feeling spicy. But the fact of the matter is that no one really wants to experience that when sniping in a Call of Duty game. Traditionally, sniping is just, it tends to be easier in Call of Duty games, especially Especially compared to other FPS franchises. And overall, for the entirety of the Black Ops 6 beta from both weekends, it just felt really difficult to perform consistently well. I didn't feel like I could go into a match and just be confident with a sniper. That was not the case. I had to be going against people who were definitively worse than me in order to actually succeed and pull anything off. If I was playing against anyone with half a brain, it was not gonna work. I had to switch off. That's a frustrating experience and I really do hope that they can find a better balance for the snipers in the full game. And that is going to bring us to my next point that I wanna talk about, which I did kind of cover in the honest review, the first video I made reviewing the Black Ops 6 beta, but I wanna talk about about it more in depth now. <sighs> In general, I am pretty worried that meta SMG Omni Movement spam will dominate the higher skilled lobbies, which means that no matter how good you get, it doesn't matter if you're a really good shotgun player or someone who likes to use an assault rifle or an LMG pistols, I don't care, it doesn't matter. The second you play a match and you do really well, you will get thrown into a high skill based matchmaking lobby and that lobby is most likely going to be run by people spamming meta SMGs and spamming the Omni Movement like they're trying out for the CDL. From my personal experience, whenever I did well, using anything in the game and the skill based matchmaking punished me like the dirty little boy that I am. I got lobbies against enemies with Jackal PDWs drenched in sweat doing the frog jumping movement tech like they're trying to become the next skunk. Except this is just a beta with no ranked mode. So they're just trying their asses off for really no reason at all. But regardless of how annoying some of these play styles could be, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that you can't run SMGs or have fun with a new movement system. I'm just saying, don't be surprised if the spammiest, most annoying version of this play style starts to frustrate you over time. And on top of that as well, if it never gets fixed or adjusted or rebalanced, it's probably probably going to lead to players quitting the game entirely. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I gotta say, I really don't feel like the Jackal PDW nerf stopped people from spamming it. Like it was also on the first default class in the game. It's just very accessible. It's still super easy to use. They did tweak it and try to tune it and overall reduce its effectiveness in the game, but it's still just dominated. Some people did switch to the C9 and try to give the MP5 a chance. But honestly, for the second weekend specifically, it kind of just felt like the C9 and the Jackal were interchangeable. They both basically could perform the same. They basically filled the same role. The Tanto was the only one that felt like it didn't completely match what they could do. Out of all of the choices for SMGs in the Black Ops 6 beta, the Tanto felt like it was the one that would perform the worst up close, but at medium to long range, it was the one that could actually start to compete better and even sometimes outgun assault rifles. And if you comboed something like the Tanto with crazy Omni movement and stuff, you could do some crazy shit, dude. Okay, man, but the last point I wanna talk about in this video, it's not necessarily about the beta, but it definitely piqued my interest. It is about the next playable experience for Black Ops 6. I've seen a lot of people ask me on stream and in my comments about whether or not Black Ops 6 is going to have an early access campaign since it has started to become a routine expectation for newer Call of Duty games and it hasn't been officially announced for Black Ops 6. Now, I do want to mention that I was watching Jeff's latest video talking about how he mentioned that they might not do it because of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign's performance. Now, obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinions about the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, but unfortunately, what happened with the Modern Warfare 3 campaign is that a lot of people really did not like it. It was a very short campaign. It got memed on super hard. And overall, it led to a negative reception. And this could have definitely hurt the sales of Modern Warfare 3. I actually did do some more digging. I did some more research. And apparently, Modern Warfare 3 sales were down 38% in the UK. And COD lost the best-selling game in 2023 to Hogwarts Legacy. Now, obviously, this doesn't paint the full picture. It doesn't give us the full sales numbers because... They weren't shared. And that to me is very telling because whenever Call of Duty has a really strong year in the game selling like hotcakes, they always talk about it. They always broadcast and advertise how amazing the sales were. So the fact that they were trying to not really talk about that that much for Modern Warfare 3 is pretty telling. But I do have to mention that I don't think that they're potentially not going to do this because they're not confident in the Black Ops 6 campaign. If anything, the Black Ops campaign from what they've shown so far is looking incredible. It looks like a great follow-up to Cold War. But unfortunately, because of what happened with the Modern Warfare 3, 
3 campaign, they might discontinue early access for Call of Duty campaigns going forward, which is honestly just kind of a huge bummer, man. I love the early access campaign, regardless of whether it's good or bad. I think it's nice to be able to get into the campaign before the multiplayer and zombies grind begins. I was really, really starting to love that as a thing for newer Call of Duty games, but unfortunately that might not be the case. Now I do want to add a caveat. We're still about a month and a half or so away from the full launch of Black Ops 6. This could change. They could announce it. Wah, wah. But at the time of recording this video, as it currently stands, there is no official announcement about early access for the Black Ops 6 campaign. And I do think that it could be because of what happened last year with Modern Warfare 3. But yeah, guys, overall, the Black Ops 6 beta, it gave us a small glimpse of what to expect for multiplayer this year for Call of Duty. Some of us loved it and others didn't love it so much. But the truth is that even though the beta can give us an idea of what multiplayer will be like, it doesn't tell the full story. There's still going to be tons of new guns, game modes, maps, perks, field upgrades, and more that we did not get to experience that can potentially change our outlook on the game. And based on my experience in the Black Ops 6 beta, I don't think things would necessarily get worse. I really enjoyed the beta. I had a lot of fun and I cannot wait to experience the full game when it's actually out. And with that being said, that's going to be a wrap for my full and final review on the Black Ops 6 multiplayer beta. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did and you want to see some more Black Ops 6 stuff, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys later. Come. Train go. Go, 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 go.